Hey, welcome. We are live talking about the brand new Nikon mirrorless cameras. Yeah, and we're, we're doing something a little different here today. Mark and I are actually in two different locations. Uh, I'm in uh, Sacramento area. Mark's up in far northern California there up in Redding. And we're coming to you uh, trying a little, a little something different, doing a little broadcast here side by side. Or... Yeah, so we're just kind of waiting for a couple things to, to log on here and we'll get right into it. So um how do we want to start this steve well let's uh let's just talk about maybe what happened last night right 9 p.m pacific time whatever time that is in japan uh, nikon did their whole dog and pony show with the new z series z mount cameras which are their new mirrorless cameras yep yeah uh, hey i just want to let everybody know i do have chat up so that we actually can see if you have a question as we talk. It's, let's see here. I'm just trying to get my screen uh, loaded so I can actually see. All right. So the very first thing that I want to say, and, and this is the first thing you and I both talked about this morning was talk about boring. Man, Nikon, how is it that you're letting these people you're letting yourself do this by putting out these incredibly boring. I understand it's kind of the uh, Asian culture thing, business culture, but you know, you're selling consumer products. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, it, you know, you know, Mark and a lot of you guys know out there, I, I'm an Apple guy, Mark's a PC guy, but you know, one of the things that, that Apple is known for is always making a great presentation and a great splash. And they're kind of the benchmark of, of new product introduction presentations. If when you compare like what, you know, Steve Jobs was master at this, but what Tim Cook does, any of the Apple team, to what Nikon did last night, it's like, wah, wah. you know, I mean, <laughs> Mark and I were joking, like chatting back and forth during this live presentation that the president of Nikon, or Nikon as he says, Nikon, stood up there with the camera in his hand, no joke, for five minutes going, like posing for the camera, like, what are you doing? It was the weirdest, to me, the weirdest thing. So, uh, man, I, yeah. But it, it was a, it was an extremely boring one hour long presentation with a lot of good information. So I'll, I'll, I'll get it. was, and it was a breath of fresh air when Tamara Lackey and the other guy came on, Chris, whatever yeah. his name is, that did this incredible, incredible uh, video that he had made. So, so here's what I want to say is just real quick is there is a ton of information out there this morning, like technical and spec information, all about the two new Nikon cameras, the Z6 and the Z7. That's not what this little chat is going to be about. This is going to be about what do we think, right? And maybe you don't care what we think, but you can type in the chat. Mark's got that open line. And uh, I'd like to hear what you guys think too. But Mark, why don't you, uh, why don't you kick this off, kind of just our conversation of what you know, what did you think? Okay. You know, so like right out of the, the gate, I, I'm afraid to give my impressions right away. Should we talk through the camera or just say what we think? I don't know. Let's start like, with what we think, okay? Yeah, Let's maybe like why, why would you buy or would you buy? Okay, so you had said, I won't say what you're going to say. I said I thought it was a great, great looking camera. I think it's a, a great step forward for Nikon. So I think they've done a good thing with this camera. Before we expound, what do you think? Um, well, let's say, would I buy it? I don't know. I honestly don't know. And that, you know, it's it sounds like I'm just wishy-washy on that, but there's a couple things that I don't like about this new camera. There's a couple things that I think are just spectacular about this thing. So, okay. um, you know. And that's what it really gets down to, right? Would you buy it? Would you not buy so, it? So listen to this. Like there's two different cameras here. We're talking about a Z6 which is a 24.6 megapixel or I think it is 24.5 megapixel camera, right? Same as the new a7 III, same megapixel. There's the Z7 and that one's 1999, same price as the Z, uh, a7 III. The, the Z7 is a 45 megapixel monster at 3,300 bucks, right? So it comes in right about that same price, maybe cheaper than the main. Okay. But it depends on like, when, you, when I say which, would I buy it? Which one of those would I buy? And probably for right now, for my my type of shooting and doing traveling, I would probably buy a Z6, honestly. Save okay. 1300 bucks and roll that into one of their lenses. All right. 
So I, I think with that being said, we'll, we'll start getting into it, but same thing. It, would I buy this camera? If I was looking to buy a new camera and right now I'm not, I'm getting soon going to be needing to buy a new camera. Um, yes, I would move into this camera with, you without hesitation. Replace, you replace your DSLR with this camera or would this be in addition to your, um, for a while it would be a, in addition, but you know, it, it's that whole thing of a lot of people are jumping ship to go move to mirrorless. They're moving to Sony. They're moving to, is this a camera system I would move into? Yes for one reason and i'll talk about that here in a minute so let's get right into like what we what we think about this camera okay so number one that thing that i'm looking at well, this isn't the number one reason but um why why would you go to a mirrorless camera and for me it's the smaller size yeah like you know why do i need a giant body anymore if you know, I can get the same features in a small body that I can get in a large body. Why do I need this big jumbo body? I think a lot of it is just it's more of that. Uh, it's comfort. You know, small camera envy or something. You know, we all think we got to have this huge body so that people will take us seriously. Like if you're a pro, people are looking at you, and, and nobody cares, right? The big picture is nobody cares. But you still feel like people look at you. And we're shooting. You know, we shot a high end wedding two weeks ago, and you know, you had a Sony a7 you're using there and you know you kind of feel like oh it's so small right you know do, am I a pro because I'm using this little camera that people yeah. think shoot with that you know which they shouldn't care and they don't because these cameras produce pictures that are as good as anything else out there so yeah. and, and I, I wrote these notes down where I just told myself you know I was trying to think of some thoughts before we talked about it is you know if I'm in the studio there's no advantage to going to a smaller body you know, it's not like I go, oh, when I'm in the studio shooting portraits, I just need a lighter camera. No, I need a lighter camera when I'm traveling. I need it when I'm shooting senior portraits, so I'm not carrying a big heavy camera around. Weddings, what an advantage it is. But, you know, so again, take that around the table. And those guys out there that are watching that are going, I shoot in my studio. I don't care that my camera's heavy. Mm -hmm. Okay, good for you. Then this is not, you don't care. But you should care. We should. It just just to double check here, I just want to make sure that we are live on, on YouTube. We are. We've got uh, people watching. Excellent. Excellent. Um, yeah. So on, my, on my side, I don't see it. I just wanted to make sure that. Okay. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so Amy says, it's a dog and pony show, LOL. Yeah, it, it kind of is a dog and pony show. I'm the pony. <laughs> and no, I, I think she's probably referring to you know Nikon's dog and pony and probably just the internet's dog and pony show yep. so um you know again we're not doing this as Nikon fanboys I mean sitting right next to me boom here's Sony I, we are Nikon shooters you're within arm's reach of your Fuji I know so, um but one of the things I do like about that smaller body I'll, I'll tell you right now one of the things they did great is the ergonomics you know i haven't put it in my hand yet but that deep grip yeah remember when we grabbed the fuji the first time and the new sony's mm -hmm. what did we say they i don't like the grip it doesn't yeah. feel good yeah the, yep. but the, the brand new ones we went they feel good because they were deeper true this sony oh my god look how tiny that thing is it, it's never been comfortable Mm -hmm. I always like the small size and I use this a seven for travel, mm -hmm. but for really shooting, I just, it feels bad in my hand. The new a sevens feel great. Yeah. Well, that's that one thing. You know, I, I looked at like the, the pictures, um, you know, I haven't held one of these new cameras yet, but that grip is really deep on these, these cameras, which I think is pretty cool. So. Yeah. I saw a picture of them side by side with the uh, 850 and it is a definitely a deep, big, thick grip. Yeah. So I think they've done a good job right there. Um, the buttons that have stayed large, you know, a lot of the mirrorless cameras have gone to very small buttons. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that the buttons are bigger than the Sony buttons. So that's, you know, I, can we just talk a little briefly just about these cameras in case someone didn't really see any of that stuff last night. So again, we, there's two different cameras, right? And you're talking about the button size and stuff, but these two cameras, the six and the seven are identical bodies. Like there's no difference in these cameras. No. They're both magnesium alloy. They're they're completely weather sealed. I mean, they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool cameras. Um, 
you know, one is again, 25 versus 45 megapixels. But here's the big thing on these cameras, Mark, that, I mean, they, they just hammer this home is this new Z mount, right? Yeah. Which here's a, you, you had mentioned to me and we actually had the exact same thought of the naming of these cameras, which actually was kind of brilliant. So they have a Z mount, which is like 17 times larger or 17% larger than any mount right now for the lens. But it's Z, right? This is the new Z line, Z mount. So they did this on purpose, and it's some it's actually some brilliant marketing. So Sony is A, right? All their alpha cameras. Yep. This is Same. the we were the first. This is the Omega. This is the end. <laughs> yep. So it's like, okay, Sony started it. Yeah, great job, guys. Now we end the game. Boom. Yeah. Here it goes. I just that that to me that, that was kind of kind of brilliant what they did. But I had a couple other things, but since you mentioned the Z mount. That's why I think this is the reason to move to this camera. I think this is the brilliant, this is the home run. I don't think the camera is a home run, but I believe that that Z mount system is a home run. Yeah. To go to that 55 millimeter size, it just, it opens up for, for faster lenses and better light performance of even existing in you know, a 2.8 lens. I guarantee is going to perform better on that larger opening than it is going to be on a F mount. In fact, I, I have a picture here. Let's see if I can share this correctly here. Let me just set this up. But of the size of that mount, um, <laughs> it's just, just crazy. Let's see. Yeah, I think the normal one is 47. The F mount, this is 55. Yeah, let's uh, let me share this shot here. Like this. <laughs> This is the six and seven side by side. And I mean, that, that mount is just huge. Like you look at the size of that hole, it's massive. And one of the things that they're saying is that it allows that much, you know, basically that much to come in and that much light to come in. But yeah, pretty incredible. So here's the other thing is that everybody always talks about, you know, they've been for years. Why isn't Sony coming out or why isn't Nikon coming out with the mirrorless camera? They just need to make one. And then they're like, they have better lenses, whatever the reasoning was, same with Canon. Canon needs to come out with one. You don't just come out with a camera mm -hmm. because all, everything with your lenses, they're set up with how far away the end of that lens is from the sensor. Yep. That's the problem. You know, those things sit back a whole, you know, long ways away on our DSLRs. Now all of a sudden you have one where there's not the mechanical shutter in there. So now your lens is fitting really close. So you can't use the same lenses, but, from what they were saying last night, this is like at 17 millimeters away. It's like the closest mount that there is out of the cameras. So that allows them now to put a, what do they call it? The NTS or, or the NTZ mount. So you can use your, your, your F mount lenses. Right. Once you put that in there, it makes it the same distance away from that sensor as it did on your DSLR. Yep. So like one of the fears was, well, if I put my existing lens on this camera, I'm going to degrade the quality. Well, I've not put anything in between the sensor and that, and I've mounted that lens exactly where that lens is supposed to be. Right. So I'm not degrading anything. So there, 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 that on another on itself is makes this camera like, okay, we could possibly. So you, you, know. see the, you see that picture up right now? Yes, look at that. So that that's the little adapter, right? And I think it's going to be two hundred fifty bucks for that adapter piece. Yeah, they say if you buy a camera, it's one hundred and fifty until the end of the year. This thing is absolutely huge for this camera. So one of the complaints always is if there's a new mount, you know, there's no lenses available for the camera, <clears throat> right? Well, here's the beauty of this camera is that this has an adapter that works on three hundred native Nikon lenses. Yeah, the beauty of this adapter is that this camera has five axis stabilization on the sensor. If you use this adapter, you have three axis stabilization or three stops they're saying of stabilization for your non VR lenses. Bingo. Yeah. Like that's a game changer. Absolute game yeah. changer. So now I can use, you know, any of my old Nikon glass. I can use my newer 7200 because they don't have a 7200 on this, this body yet. You know, I can do all this stuff, which is just but it's an F4. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's killer. So like to be able to use my 85, you know, the one that they did is what you know, obviously doesn't know what they haven't said is whether a third party Nikon lens will work with this adapter. I can't imagine it wouldn't, but then again, I don't know. 
Yeah. You know, Nikon's problem has always been is that mechanical aperture. Yep. And, and that's been the big problem. But again, they've solved that problem. It's going to work. But just think about this, Mark. If you, if you have 300 lenses at your introduction of your camera. Reality, it's 450. Okay. So 450, whatever it is. I mean, it's yeah. a big number. That's huge. I mean, absolutely huge. How many did Sony have on their new mount when it first was introduced? Three. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. I exactly. Think so I, I love it that people are already arguing about how there's not a big enough lens selection. Well, guess what? They've given you the answer where you can still use your lenses, and they keep pointing to Sony. And like you just said, when Sony came out, they had the same thing. Three lenses, and everybody said, I can't switch because they don't have lenses. And guess what? Really quickly, they had lenses. And every day, we're getting more better lenses on Sony. Yeah, and they're talking about this new this new mount You know, has an unheard of or an unprecedented lens lens edge-to-edge -edge sharpness. <laughs> that was my next note I was getting ready to say. like That's the, that's the huge advantage of 55 millimeter ring. Yeah. So, you know, we, we've gotten so fortunate to, to have cameras nowadays that really are sharp across the range, but this, this is going to be unheard of with that opening. So, yeah. Steven Squires, welcome to watching us. He says we're live. live. We are live. So, but yeah, that edge to edge sharpness and the stuff that I saw from Tamara Lackey, oh my goodness, it was definitely sharp edge and it didn't distort yeah you know and and here's the other advantage of them the way they had addressed this with that 55 millimeter mount it allows them to make lenses differently so they actually have lighter lenses yeah it, it, it takes like i guess less glass or something in order to disperse it through that lens so now the, it's more compact because that's one of the problems is, okay, I grab my Sigma 85 art lens and I stick that on a mirrorless camera. Suddenly, I just turned a pound and a half camera into a 10-pound camera. Mm -hmm. And I lost all the advantage. But I, I love what you know, Steven Squires just said, the, the Z mount and the adapter is really impressive. Can't wait to see those knocked lenses. He's talking about the Sony or Sony, sorry. That was a slip. Uh, Nikon says they're introducing this brand new lens. It's 53 millimeter lens that is a 0.95 aperture. <laughs> Which is funny because it, it sounds like, ooh, that's neat, but I can't focus at 1.4. <laughs> and, and the thing with this this new lens, it is gonna be uh, manual focus. So I can't, like like you, I can't focus, if I'm trying to shoot with a 1.4, 1.2 lens, I can't see through the viewfinder enough to see it, so. We had that discussion before about why I hated 85s, because my first 85 lens was a, uh, manual focus and yeah. I never could focus it. So it was like, I hate 85s. So, but give me an autofocus. I love it. You're in you're actually another question just, or another comment came in from uh, another Steven here. It says, you know, what's the deal with Nikon in their one card slot? That's a great opportunity to talk about. Yeah. how you feel Okay. About That's it. on our list. So let's talk about it now. Yep. Um, Steve, do you ever shoot to two card slots? I have two card slots. Do I ever shoot to both at the same time? I will say no. I don't. I've never done it. I always have two cards. I always have two cards in my camera. And I, and I know why you have two cards in there. <laughs> I have two because cards. if you were to, if I were to get in my car and drive to your house, my Sony Action Cam would be at your house because I left it in your car yesterday. I leave stuff everywhere, everywhere, and I leave all the time. And I go out to do a shoot, and when I get home, I go. The card's not, oh, good. I had a second card. It wrote to the second card. That's the only reason I like two card slots. Yeah, I don't I don't shoot two, two cards at the same time. Now, here, here's my thinking. People have been asking, actually, this morning, I got a couple of messages that came through our channel about this whole card thing. So this here is an, is an XQD card, right? It, it used to be in my D4 that took a swim. So these cards are stinking fantastic. They, they hands down are the best cards. I mean, this thing is built like a tank. You cannot bend it. It's just, it's rock solid and they're yeah. super, super fast. Now the problem is you probably can't see it on the video, but but they're twice as thick. They're almost the same thickness as a, maybe they're even a little thicker than a CF card. Physically, they're larger. The, the thing is, I don't think they had enough room in this camera with this first edition to put two cards because the card reader and writer in that camera, you know, when you think of the size, 
something else in the way that they couldn't stick another card in there in order yeah. to double them up. So is it a big deal? Maybe it sounds like it's a big deal that, that they don't have them. Is it a big deal in reality? Absolutely not. No. Nope. You can get, you know, almost a terabyte <laughs> card right now yeah. uh, in size. So Exactly. So, And that's exactly what I say. I've had cards fail, CF cards. The only reason I've had a CF card fail is because those thin little flaps that separate everything get caught on something and tear open, and then it opens the card up. These I've not cards, had them just fail on me. So these cards are completely sealed, these XQD cards. Like, they just, they just, they won't fail. So, big deal, maybe to some, but not to me. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, if it's important to you, then then by all means, you can say, this was a huge mistake, you guys shouldn't have done this. To me, I don't really care. And the other part that I think is kind of amusing, and again, you know, look at this, A7. Guess what? One card slot. Mm -hmm. I don't remember everybody saying the A7 is a failure because you can only have one card in it. Did they fix that? Yeah. Is Nikon going to fix it? Guarantee you. I heard Tony Northrup say uh, this morning, uh, he had mentioned about his understanding or what his thought was, if I, if I gathered this right, was one of the other reasons why there's only one card in it right now is just weather sealing is having the ability to seal the camera, mm -hmm. you know, because that's one thing Nikon right now is going, you know, this is the air apparent to the iconic D850. Yep. They're like, we took the 850 features and we're turning it into a mirrorless. And so we're going to do this magnesium alloy body. That's going to be weather sealed. And one thing about Nikon cameras that are supposedly weather sealed, they are weather sealed. They're totally weather sealed. And it's interesting, like, you know, Smart Jet just wrote, uh, it's in process of ordering an A7R3, then waited for the Z7, but now after seeing it all, it seems that the Z7 is a year or two behind them on uh, on lenses for mirrorless. See, that's, that's where it's totally confusing to a lot of people. It's like, they're not because they have 450 lenses available for this camera. They're not behind at all. Cheers, Andrew. Welcome hey, Andrew. to the UK. So that's that's the huge benefit about this camera is that you can use this Nikon adapter and it's it's not like using a Metabones adapter where everything becomes manual focus and you lose quality. This is a Nikon adapter for Nikon F mount lenses. You have 450 plus you have all the new lenses that are introduced today and then yeah. the more that are coming out in the next two years. So. Yep. No, so it's you, you're not, and are they behind? Of course they're behind. They just introduced it today, right? <laughs> so Sony, when they came out, they had three lenses. They're, guess what? Believe it or not, Sony's still behind on lenses. Yep, they're just finally getting caught up. Yeah. And, that's and they're five years ahead of Nikon right now. That's why it's, again, this isn't a fanboy thing of like, no. you know, it's Nikon, but guess what? Nikon jumped in now, and they did a good job. And I don't want to make it sound like we're slamming Sony. I, man, I love this new Sony equipment. It's No, no, yeah. It's, it's nothing to do with one's better than the other. We're just talking about the Nikon camera today. Yep. Yep. So, um, a um, couple other things. What, what I saw that was important to me. This isn't even something that I knew was important to me. Don't you hate it when you're shooting with your camera and then you go to look at your camera and what do you have to do? You've no got to screen. take your shirt, right, and wipe your screen because all the oils from your face end up on the LCD screen. It's nose grease. You can it's use no, it yes. on your, on But your the screen. new the new one, they showed the side profile of that camera, uh -huh. and the IP sticks out about that far. And so when you put your eye to it, your face, your cheek, your nose is not resting on the LCD screen, yep. which if you want to use the eyepiece, that's a that's a huge improvement. I, I love that. that, that. I, I, have I have ripped off uh, my IP protector thing on the back of my Nikon cameras 50 times. I think I lose them because I shove it in my camera bag and the thing pops off. I just hope that doesn't happen. With these yeah, guys. that is one of the fears is that. So the other thing is um, silent shooting. Finally, finally, you could have silent finally. shooting with a Nikon camera. Yay. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, it's funny. My, my D4, Mark, remember that? Back before it drowned, <laughs> like that thing sounded like a cannon. I'm not talking about a camera. I'm talking about like every click, 
And then it had this quiet mode. And then it finally sounded like a, you know, maybe a bazooka rather than a whole cannon. It was like, it still was crazy. So <laughs> it, was, it was nuts. But if I could have completely silent, and I actually had to borrow an, a Canon camera one time. I was shooting an interview with a high profile speaker and I had to, I had to shoot still pictures and I needed silent. And so I had to borrow a camera, so I could have a, a silent camera, but um, that would be a big, a big plus for me. Yes. Um, Andrew was just asking about, he was hoping for the eye focus, auto eye focus. I was too. Yeah, me too. I, I wish they had had that because I love that feature. But guess what? Sony's the only camera that has that. Everybody makes it sound like every other camera has it. How come Nikon doesn't? No, Sony's the only one that has eye focus. Mm -hmm. And does it work all the time? It's great, but not really. It does it doesn't work all the time. It doesn't it, it doesn't work all the time for the kind of shooting we do. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you know, they've got face focus, and I've used Nikon face focus. Actually, my 750, Nikon D750 has face focus, and it works. Yep. This one supposedly has body focus, too, and I don't know. I haven't heard it much about that, but it, it follows along a, a full body and all that kind of stuff. So we'll have to see. Those are, one of the, those are one of those things that, you know, people are moaning about right now, but until you actually see it in action, you know, yep. nobody other than Sony has been able to get eye focus to work, right? And I... I think, you know, this This is your, I'm stealing one of your comments that, you know, we when we were chatting about this, is because I was pretty upset that it didn't have iFocus. You're like, simmer down, you know, that's not a big deal. Nobody can get it to work. I'm like, it had to work. <laughs> Nobody can get it to work. I mean, happened to, to get it right, and it works, but it's better that they didn't produce a camera that didn't work than produce one that works. So. Exactly. Add those features as you figure it out. Yeah. So when, as we're talking about focus, so... You know, they've got, what, 493 points of phase detection. Those are phase detection points, buddy. Phase detection. <laughs> yeah. Which instantly, I've heard a lot of people say things like, yeah, but Sony has, you know, 527 or whatever the number is. Guess what? The D850, which is the flagship of all DSLRs, has 152 points. And it works incredible. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's one one area, and I'm going to start to sound like a little Nikon fanboy here for a second, but Nikon Focus in most cameras, I won't say all of them, I've had some trouble in a couple, but in most Nikon cameras is so stellar, and so good, I'm not worried about that. Yeah. And, you know, we were making fun of, too, that that's one of the differences between the 6 and the 7, right? So the, the 7 has 400, what did you say, 493? The six has uh, two hundred seventy three focus points. Yeah. It's like, oh, what slackers? Only two hundred seventy three, and then you know we used to get excited over fifty one focus points. So. Exactly. <laughs> it's how far we've come, and you know, I encourage you. You can just search on our channel the word rodeo. You know, I did an interview with Matt Cohen, the world's greatest rodeo photographer, and he talked about the D 5s phase detection and how that works and. I don't know if this is that same system. If it's anywhere close to that, I'm excited because when Matt started explaining how he can follow somebody as they come into a scene and move out of a scene, it's pretty amazing, the technology there. Yep. Uh, nobody has gotten close to focusing the way Nikon's focusing, at least in their D5s. So let, let's hope. The other big thing, too, is you know that I'm interested in seeing, and I haven't – Nobody's really talked about it much, but it's just the, this low light capability, right? So that's a big difference between the 6 and the 7. The 6 actually has better low light capability. That's because of the the larger pixels per sensor size, right? 25 yeah. or 45. Yeah. Uh, so the, the photo sensors, the photo sight sensors are larger, can take in more light. So, you know, the, the ISO rating is 64 to 25.6 on seven and then on this on the six it is what are we um fifty one thousand on the top end natively it's gonna be better now nikon has just crushed everybody else other than some of the 12 megapixel sony cameras like the the s right as far as low light so if you can get a 25 megapixel camera that has incredible low light capability in a mirrorless full frame with incredible brand new glass that's going to be a deal changer for a lot of people. I mean, it's going to. Yeah. 
going to be pretty cool. Yeah. And then, the, you know, again, there's all the technical stuff that we don't want to really talk about, but, you know, they they got into a little bit of that new processor, what's called like the XSEED or XSIDE processor. Um, they say it'll give better sharpness. It, it does this thing called uh, mid-level sharpening that just, just opens up, you know, a, a sharper pictures, lower noise at higher ISOs, all of those things. So, there's a real advantage to this new processor above and beyond just the speed of the camera. It's to be able to do some of these heavier lifting things like this mid-level sharpening, which I don't understand. I don't know either. That's just me. That was marketing gobbledygook. Yep. And, and again, you know, it's the, the tilt screen. I, I'm glad it tilts. I, 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 don't, I couldn't imagine them not having a tilt screen today. The only, my only drawback is that it doesn't tilt and then flip out. So if you're using it as a vlogging camera, but you know, I, I get it and I go like, okay, so all of you people watching, how many of you are vloggers? Everybody, everybody vlogs. Everybody's a vlogger, yeah. But apart from that, who really needs it? Vloggers need it. We need it. And uh, yeah, so again, that's not a deal breaker. It's a deal breaker as a vlogging camera, but you know, how many people are looking for their vlogging camera they're gonna carry around handheld in front of them? Are looking to spend three thousand dollars on you know you're going to be a higher level whatever it is so there's options out there yeah steven also asked do you think nikon is going to improve snap ridge um i have no idea that's been a clue reading our notes <laughs> kind of a kludgy uh software nikon is not a good software company that's one thing i'll say um who knows i mean yeah, it, i think it does have to be because one of the things they've added is the fact that you'll be able to shoot to your PC or your Mac. Yeah. So that is different where SnapBridge hasn't had that. So there's obviously a huge upgrade to it and you can control the camera through it. There's you new, do it. I know this camera does have new Wi-Fi and low power Bluetooth built in. So the, the nice thing is that low power is the key there. It's a separate Bluetooth system that uh, will not burn down your battery like most Bluetooth products do. And that's the one drawback. Again, like Sony, you turn that stuff on your battery just dumps big time. And even the Nikon stuff, you turn on your Wi-Fi, your Nikon battery, your cell phone battery, all that stuff just, it's just, yeah. Dang, so just really quick to answer, um, Samarji, I guess mm -hmm. that's how you say, you're not hoping I'm not butchering it too bad. You think they're overpriced? Not particularly. I don't. I, I, don't. I look at it and go, you know, is the Tesla Model X overpriced? I think it is, but guess what? That allowed them to come out with a Model 3, right? That That's your your first generation of things always feel overpriced because there's a lot of R&D you're trying to pay for. And those first adopters are the people who help pave the way for less costs, for better improvement, you know, those things. So I, I look at it this way, you know, Nikon in general has always been overpriced, <laughs> I think. Like it's, it's, the, it's the expensive camera brand out there. Yep. Um, the thing with this, they didn't do that this time. This is in line with everybody out there. So think of Fuji HX1. You know, they right now they've got some big discounts on it, but it was it was a nineteen hundred dollar camera. Yep. This Z6 is a nineteen hundred dollar camera. Mm -hmm. A7 III. Three, three is a nineteen hundred dollar camera. camera. The Olympus OMD Model Two Mark Seventeen Forty Four, whatever they've got such long names, is a nineteen hundred dollar camera. So like everybody in that range is the same price. The yeah. seven, same price with your your AR seven threes and your A9. So no, I don't think it's over. Okay. No. So I think they're right in there price wise, the right, the right price they need to be at. Um, the thing we didn't talk about with this sensor, yeah, uh, you know, what they're claiming is Nikon's going, you like the 850? This is a better sensor. Mm-hmm. You're gonna potentially get better images than you will out of an 850 off of this sensor. Uh, right there makes it, yeah, it's definitely worth, I think it's $100 more than buying a 850 yeah. right now. Yeah. You know, so right out of the gate. The other thing, you know, on that sensor, I, I talked about it real briefly before, but um, put up the picture here. <clears throat> it's right from the Nikon website, but this 850, First thing to this, this, both models have this new five axis stabilization on the sensor. And it says five stops of the image stabilization and up to three when you use your VR lenses. It's just incredible. 
here's my, here's my question. Like, if you have a VR lens, does it work in conjunction with VR? I heard today that it does. Which would be pretty incredible. Yeah, which, it, it, which somebody was mentioning the fact that where that really comes into play, you're already getting so much stabilization for stills, but in video, where people have said, wow, we thought we need to put that on the gimbal, and then we looked at the footage and went, uh, no, we don't. This is good enough. Yeah. So I, it, that, to me, is super impressive. Like, that's that's another game changer, again, because you can use your own old lenses that are not vibration reduction and make them VR. Yeah. <laughs> How cool is that? Yeah. And, and video, let's not even discuss too much of it. it. It's pretty standard. It's 4K. It's 120 at HD. And guess what? Until you actually see it perform video, I would love to think that it actually can focus because that is Nikon, and we'll both say it is, it, it just, it's the worst. It sucks when it comes to video and trying to focus. Supposedly, this one has fixed that, yeah, and we'll have to wait and see. That has the best focus out there for stills, could not get their stupid video focusing right. Yeah. And this one's yeah, working video, it works perfect in stills. Yep. And this is silent, you know, silent focus. So, yeah. I think the last thing on our list is um, that battery. Yeah. You know, it's the same battery, the 850, which is kind of nice if you already own some batteries, but we're hearing that, it, you know, 350 images or something out of a battery. It, hopefully there's a new battery coming. Well, you know, there's two, there's two versions, actually. There's the battery that's the standard, whatever it is, EL, EL15. Yeah, and then there's right. EL15B. Huh? The B is the one that is for the camera. That one can be by... USB, USB-C, um, right in the camera. So you keep the, the camera, battery in the camera, and you can charge it while the battery's there. So yeah. that's up. There's, there's some new things coming. We, we just can't expect everything. And, you know, working with the company Interfit that we work with, we know for a fact that it's not easy to just go, let's get a new battery. There's so much testing. And even when you prove the battery works, there's all these testings in order to bring it into the country there's then there's another test you got to do to be able to ship the thing can it fly on an airplane can it you know just batteries are one of the most difficult things in the world to deal with it seems easy but it's not hey, i just thought of something about that whole battery thing what which i just said and then once i said it and it came out of my mouth i thought how incredible this is so you can charge through USB-C, which is you know it's becoming like a standard you know the new USB-C plugs yep you can charge it while the battery's in the camera. Get this. That means one less piece of equipment I have to bring on my trip. I don't have to bring a charger for my battery. All I have to use is my standard cords, USB-C cords, and now I can charge it. How cool is that? Yeah, it's awesome. It's what a great thing. So I had my little list here of like things that I've heard people complain about. We've talked about most of them, so a lot of them go faster. You should be playing the... the Taylor Swift song. I know. Shake it off, man, because haters got to hate. One card slot, we talked about it. You know what? I, I don't need it. Maybe you do, and it's important. But neither one of us go, okay, it's not a game changer for a, us. Not a deal killer. Not a deal killer, yeah. No eye focus. Well, Sony's the only one with eye focus. Flip it forward screen, that of vloggers. Well, you know, unless you're a vlogger, what do you need it for? Lens selection. Guess what? Every Nikon lens right now for $150 will mount onto that thing without any degradation. And then I heard another person talk about, I can't believe they didn't do pixel shifting. And I know on paper, you know, you can and pixel peep and show how it's so much better. If I, if I was a landscape photographer making my living doing landscape photography, Pixel shift would be important to me. I'm not, so it's not important. I don't hear anybody talking about it other than I don't. companies. Yeah. So those are the only, like, those are the big ones I'm hearing people go, this is what it is. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I think, um, I think something that I was just going to say, but now it's it's gone. Oh, here was the other thing. So, so Steven says, at the end of the day, who will own the mirrorless camera market, Sony or Nikon? So, um, <coughs> Mirrorless camera market is different than the full frame mirrorless camera. 
So you got companies like Fuji that are a little bit of an underdog. You've got, you know, Olympus, which is an underdog. And I'm just talking on sales numbers, not cameras. But, you know, if we're talking about full frame, it's going to be a battle. And here's yeah. the interesting thing is that Sony. Last I think that's what he's asking because he's saying who's going to win the day, Sony or Nikon. So here's the thing that's funny. Like last week, Sony knew that this introduction was coming this week. So what did they put out? They put out that they won the Marketplace Awards for having the most mirrorless full frame cameras in the market five years in a row. Uh, Sony, you're the only one that's had full frame mirrorless cameras in the market, period. So, so yes, you are going to be number one. So, you know, the question is a year from now, two years from now, who's going to be number one? I have no idea. Yeah. I know that at, at the end of this day, at the end of next month, it's going to be Sony, right? Sony's going to be on the top of the heap. This camera, though, is if you're Sony, the company, guess what? You better start thinking about what's your next move. Yep. Hey, not, Mike. Not that, can't, not that Nikon's going to crush you or anything like that, but it's a matter of they're nipping at your heels now. It just motivates you to, to keep making better cameras. Not that you're not already. Competition is a good thing. It is. Like, you know, we, lo we love to see the competition. Mike just joined. How are you, Mike? Yeah. All of us are going to uh, a benefit. So we did. We did have a, a question again. Um, I think it was Andrew who asked it. But you know, so are you going to buy one? Not right now. I'm not, and, and it's not because I, I, I'm not buying into. Oh, uh, this is a great camera. I, I'm just very cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't move very quickly. I don't have money to spend right now. And I and my camera is working fine for me. So am I going to buy one right now? No. In okay. the future. Well, let's, well, let's, let's take that out. Okay. Okay. If you had four thousand dollars, because you're going to be buying a new camera, would you buy one today? Would you yeah. buy an eight fifty or would you buy this? I would buy this. Which one? I would buy the uh, seven. That the Z seven, just because of the style that I shoot um by that adapter because i just believe that 55 millimeter mount that's the future of nikon lenses is is that z mount yeah not even anything to do with it being you know mirrorless it's the z mount system there are so many advantages and so much you know they're, they're sure going to look like they're going to be sharper better light all that i don't i don't think you'll see you still see some but you'll you'll not see as many dslrs from nikon coming out anymore. Right, I think it's all going to shift to mirrorless, and this new Z mount is going to be what people are using. So. Yep. So, would I buy one? Of yeah, I would. Uh, do I think that wow, this is that that it's better than it's? Uh, I've always had people have asked me, "When are you going to switch to Sony?" Well, my answer has been, "I'm too invested in Nikon glass. It's not an easy move to say I'm just going to stop using these thousands of dollars worth of lenses." and invest in a new system. I don't have that money to invest. Mm. But now Nikon's going, here's a, you can go mirrorless and you can use your Nikon glass. I'm, I'm applauding and going, good move, well, Nikon. V, v asked a great question. He says, I got a Sony a7 III a week ago, or three weeks ago. Do I sell it and get a new Z6? I own several lenses, Nikon lenses, and an a10. I can't tell you to sell it. I mean, the, I haven't played with the Z6, right? I haven't touched one. I've only looked at it in pictures and stuff, so I don't know. I played with a, a three, a seven three, great camera, stellar camera. You're gonna be disappointed. You didn't with make it. a bad move. That's Are you definitely. gonna be disappointed with it? No. Are you gonna always be chasing the latest thing? Yes. Is that a good thing? No. <laughs> you know, so like, you made the investment. If you're making the investment mentally to switch, switch. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, go ahead, switch. I like to say we're not we're not Nikon fanboys. It's just what we happen to use because it works for us. Yeah, we but, were just talking. We we had a meeting with Low Pro this week, and yeah. we were talking to the marketing director there, at Low Pro, and it was we got on the subject of Olympus, and it's like they're an amazing camera. People will go, yeah, it's Micro Four Thirds, all these things that they throw up to say no, 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 and we're going. Look at Joe Edelman. Look at the stuff that he's producing with this thing. Look at, you know, there's a number of pros that are using Olympus. It's fantastic. We're never going to tell somebody, you know, well, oh, this camera's horrible. This camera's good. 
Yeah, we're so just I, talking. What do we think of this one? Keep your Nikon stuff because that 810 is phenomenal. Unless you need to sell it to pay for your other one. And then, you know, you've got this. If you want to make the full investment to switch over, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Nope. You know, I, I, it's funny. I don't even remember what this is about. I heard a comedian this week and he was, uh, talking about it was that patrick warburton you know that was on seinfeld yeah it was at one of the shows he was in he was going like it's funny how people will like call the cable company or the satellite company and complain about how hard is it to just get a good signal to my house you know he's like yeah how hard is it to send a rocket up into space to put a satellite in geosynchronous orbit to keep it in there to point your signal at it and then to beam it back into my house and then Put that into into a signal that can be read and put it into my TV. How hard is that? You know, it's like, and, and I hear people talking like that already about this camera. Yep. How hard is it, Nikon, to put in two two card slots? How hard would it be to put auto eye detection? Those people are smarter than I am. <laughs> it's obviously pretty hard to do. I like uh, what CCC Lab just said. You know. The key really is about that Z mount point being Nikon converted it to it on, on its new line. Sony's locked into the E mount for the next 10 years. Bodies evolve, but mounts last for a long time. Yeah. That is why I said that was the number one thing for me is the E mount or the Z mount is it, it's going to change things for everybody. Yep. Now Sony has to convince themselves that we did a good job keeping that mount small. Maybe they did. It just seems like Nikon in the future has advantages over them, over everybody right now with that new mount. With that but, uh, hole so big, you better invest in good sensor swabs. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, and don't open them during a fire. That's right. Yeah. But, I, you know, we started this with you saying, you know, you think the thing that no, nobody's really talking about is the fact that the Z6 may even be a more important camera. I think it is. I think it's the it's the probably the more important camera that nobody's talking about. Just like you said, because you know what is everybody talking about? Just like V asked the question about the the A seven three. That's the hot camera right now. You cannot get an A seven three by just walking down the store and buying. They they don't have any. It's just sold out everywhere. Because the majority of photographers are hobbyists. Uh huh. It, that's why I said you asked. You know, which one do I buy? The Z seven because you and I do commercial work. I need the bigger files for commercial work, but throw the commercial work away. And I'm probably like 90% of everybody, 95% of the people watching on YouTube. I, I'm getting the Z6. Yeah. Because you don't need that big of a file. And you know what? The Z6 is a lot easier to sell the idea to your wife for $2,000 than $35. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, and, and frames, you know, earlier, uh, Somebody was just asking, uh, Samarji just asked about the uh, frames per second. So it's 12 frames per second for the Z6, and it's nine frames per second for the Z7, which that, that's it's great. Yeah, CD, uh, CCC Lab again says the Z mount can likely accommodate a 100 megabyte sensor with no change of lenses, which is true. I mean, you think of like, you know, phase one you ever look at the front of a phase one camera 100 megabyte or 100 you know megapixel camera oh yeah right the, the hole is big again so it's because that sensor is is huge yeah because what happens if you get the sensor bigger then in theory you really need to move the lens away because that signal crosses and then it's like a projector projecting onto that sensor so you start big you don't have to project as, as wide. It's already there. Yeah. So. Yeah, another. another $2,000. Another comment from Smartjeet. Just, uh, do you think people wait for the A7S3 before making the switch to Z's? You know, A7S models, they're really video guys. For yeah. Both. Yeah, the S's, they, they don't make a lot of difference for, for us as photographers. For, for photographers, no. For video, yeah. So I, I don't see I don't see hardcore video guys in the next few years ever going, 
I'm going to get Nikon to be all my video stuff, even if they're killer. It's just not in it's not in people's mindset to think of Nikon as a video company. Yep. And they're much more invested in in their system than even photographers are because it takes a lot more gear to do video than it does to do stills. So, uh, yeah. All right. Well, wondering how the the Z6 will be for sports shooting. Uh, we'll add up to doing what the D500 has been doing. I would think 276 focus points, 12 frames per second. Yeah, I would say that's pretty good. Now, the thing is that with the burst on that one, if I'm remembering right, was what, 25? Compared to 18 on the 7. Um, mm -hmm. So if you need to do 100 frames in a row, no. But yeah. So Nimalaya just came on late, obviously, because just kind of went through all the things we just talked about, the 310 shots with batteries. You know what? It, it's going to be, again, we're not fanboys. We're not trying to sell anybody on these new cameras. Nothing's going to come out perfect the first time. There are limitations, obviously. But once again, I, I still will state that Z mount is the game changer. Yep. Does it make it instantly better? No. But it has a better future. And I think what, what we have to remember, not every camera is going to have every feature out there. <laughs> it's just not going to. Yeah, name the camera right now that has everything you could want. Even even that, you know, the A7 III, which is the, the cool product on the block right now. Is it... The Panacea, is it the everything that you want? Obviously not, because Sony keeps coming out with a new model every two months. You know, they'll make something better. It's just use what you have and use it well. That's, that's yeah. The, I mean. yeah, you guys would be shocked to know what I'm using. You know, it, it's I, I haven't outgrown it. Nope. Like, I, I'm not looking at my stuff and going, man, I have so much image degradation or whatever. You know, it was like, Am I envious when I see the files come out of your camera? A lot of times I am simply because not because I go, wow, that's so much better. Picture looks identical, but you have a picture this big. I have a picture this big. So you have room to crop and, and not lose any quality where I'm going to lose a little bit of quality if I have to crop. Mm -hmm. So there, a new camera is not going to make you a better photographer. So, no, that's for sure. So you know that for sure. Yeah. Yep. This guy says agree. We think Nikon's uh, end game, honestly, to win in the long run, not the short race. Yeah. The, the president talked about that. One of the first things he said in that very, very long, boring speech last night was that <laughs> he oh. says we will be number one in the full frame mirrorless market. We will be number one. We will. I mean, he's like he was hammering that thing home. They have the goal that they are going to crush everybody else out there. And you know what? They just might. Yeah. Like, like what camera doesn't have that? You know, that philosophy. You shouldn't be a business if your philosophy is we're going to one day try to be as good as Sony. You know, is Sony out there going one day? You know, or now they're trying to you know saying hey we we rule the the world in in mirrorless. Okay, yep. then stop. Don't don't make anything else. Just stop. You, you hit the pinnacle. Don't make anything more. Like V said, that that, that speech put me to bed. Oh, God. That, that's why I called it the Z, you know, the sleeping Zs, right? That was, they named this camera right, because that was a Z speech. <laughs> yeah. All of them were until you got to, like I said, Tamara and, and the other guy. So did it not make you want to learn how to do that stop motion? And yeah. That was done in camera. So that was the other thing we didn't talk about at all. Is it does have 8K time lapse built yeah. in. So it allows you to do some really cool stuff. Punching in and doing some neat things. Yeah. yeah. All right. I didn't see it on my notes. I'm just going over and seeing if there's anything. That, that's everything. So if anybody has any more questions, again, we don't have answers. We're just talking about what we've seen. And uh, do we think it's a home run? Not a home run. Might be a triple. 
Good for position start. to score. I don't. I don't think. I once this camera gets out of the market and people get their hands on it, and if it performs according to how it should, based upon everything we've heard, it will be a very viable camera in the marketplace. Did it overtake Sony? I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, so I can't say that. Probably not. Is it as good, other than maybe some features that people feel are missing? Absolutely. Yeah. Is it a game changer? That mount is. Yeah. And, and the fact is, you know, again, you can't dispute the fact that what's the best DSLR sensor on the market or mirrorless? Throw all those cameras, mirrorless and DSLRs into one pool. Who's the top dog? It's the Nikon D850, right? And Nikon saying, we're taking the 850 and we've made it better. So they're claiming this is a better sensor than the 850. So there's the possibility. We don't know this, that in a month, people are going to be saying, this is the greatest sensor that's ever been put on a DSLR or a mirrorless. Yep. But maybe they'll say, hey, you know, it, it fell flat. It doesn't work. But I, I just can't imagine that happening. And guys, just remember, in the big picture, none of this really matters. No. <laughs> People get so offended. Oh, my, but my camera brand is better. Who cares? It's all great stuff. Go out there and shoot something and have fun. That's what it's all about today. Yeah. Have fun. Yep. That's what we try to do is bring the fun back to photography. But That's right. If you're losing sleep over your camera brand, then you need to sell your camera because you're not having fun. Yeah. We get paid to take pictures. <laughs> what a crazy life that is. It is. What an amazing thing. So I love it. You know, I always think back to Zach Arias's uh, video that made him so popular, that one called Transformations. And he's like, anytime that I get caught complaining, someone needs to just take me out to the woodshed and just give me a spanking because I deserve it. Because <laughs> we live amazing lives. So, guys, everybody on this call, chat, whatever we're calling it. Go out today and shoot something. Have fun. And don't worry about your equipment. No. You got Sony? Enjoy it. You're shooting Fuji? Love every minute. Love those colors. You're shooting Olympus? You've got razor blade sharp images. You're shooting Nikon? Man, it's a good day. Yep. You're shooting Canon? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yep. And guess what? If you're shooting Kodak, you're still having fun. You are. So... If you're phase one, you're, you're lying. <laughs> yeah, so. so, but anyways, anyway. guys, thanks for uh, for hanging out with us. Hopefully, that was enjoyable, informational, or just plain boring. And now, I guarantee you, it was not as boring as that Nikon talk last night. So. No. So if you missed that, you just got to hear all the, the the main highlights, and you didn't have to be as bored. So that's right. Like always, man. Tell your friends. Like, subscribe. I think all of you guys are subscribing. Um, we're excited about what's happening on our channel. We're excited about things that are going to be happening soon. Big things. Yes. Big, big. But most importantly, we okay. want you to remember to say sushi. Say sushi. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Happy trails. <laughs>